as that guy I go. But don't you find that you are just sitting there in a line of 16 other women. <laughs> That's what the choice is Right? So, this is how you do it. So, in the rational choice theory, it's about assumption. We assume if we choose this modality as our uh, policy, then I think we'll get gains that we are investing in here. That's what we do. We choose this one, I see it will give us a Right? That's why the pre analysis and the post analysis is about addressing these assumptions around us. Now that all the points have been implemented, are we getting what we assume we are going to get? Right? That's why you have the, now the uh, policy analysis at the end. Right? You have the implementation of the cost of the and you measure whether you have the good, you got your results right or you did not get your results right. This is how you got the rational uh, choice theory. So here, you really need to be very careful in how you do your assessment to understand whether a project after the way can give you what you intend to achieve. Okay. So rationalization is about being able to identify what can work, what can not work, what can give you results, what can not give you results, what will be cheaper, and what is not going to be cheaper, and also some things around. Here, the type of theory here helps us to identify different goals. So we have different goals and also can give you different options for the benefits that you are going to get. And this type of book, uh, looking at your uh, rational choice theory, is what we refer to as the transitive ordering. Transitive, transitive, like the moving around, right? Yes. So you're ordering. By moving from one alternative to the next. Positive order is where you check through the alternative and you pick one alternative to the next. Rationality 
that as I just mentioned earlier on, that the national material security is a very real issue, right? How you behave towards what you want to achieve, how you want to achieve it, and your choices. That's what it is. So here, you find that it is basically an issue of uh, individual behavior. Now, in behaviors, we all differ based on what is happening around us at any one particular time, and also uh, what is available to us when we are in government. Is an individual behavior static or dynamic? Is it constant or various? So you can see all these small questions and not explain what behavior, what behavior is. How I behave here may be very different from how I would behave if I were in church. Different. Yes. And how we all behave in the class is different from how we behave when we go to church. In the class, you ask questions. In church, you never ask my regular questions. Why? Because the norms of that particular institution do not require you to ask questions. Right? It's all the great, it's the greatest. So, many of us is but in a real institution, in a real situation like this one, this is transacting type of uh, relationship here. You ask, I ask, we share, right? This is how it is. So, that's what the choice here is all about behavior and how you manage the behavior to choose what is important for you and something like that. Uh, here, it's argued that it is normal situation, right? Uh, for a person who is confronted with a lot of choices, eh? it's possible, and you get confused. What would happen? What would happen? Let me uh, give you a very small example. I think I, I, I tried it the other time. Uh, you've never had food for maybe. The only food that you know is maybe. Fruits, cinnamon, and myself. That's what they were eating. Right? That's a serious one. Right? Eh? For so long, have you know people eat meat, fish, eggs, rice, all sorts of pizza, something like that? And uh, here you have for this day, it's a special day. They're bringing everything. Hello? Pizza, rice, whatever it is, meat. How do you eat? <laughs> and I tell you, next time we have this type of meal, it will be next year, same time. So it will be October, and another October next year. So we will go back eating our fruits and whatever it is. How do you eat? I will eat a ton of food. What? I will eat, I will try to eat everything. And once. Not everything, but I mean, I can try every dish that is there. Okay. Yes. All right. So after that, it's the forcing. Eh? But you know, so, take the next So, those are the two of our choices and the other issues. There are small things like those. But any of the policies do, you can decide to craft a policy which is mixing things like that, right? You know, problems in the end. It will not work out. That's why policies must focus on a particular goal. That's our policy, a policy goal, right? So that you focus on that particular goal. And that goal, you can break it down into specific objectives that you are going to undertake. And objectives give you the tasks that you are going to do, right? Something like that. So, here, the example again is about if you mix everything around, you have any goal, right? The task will be there, you mix everything around. That's what task you mix as a task. That is not very tasty, no? but in the area see, they need not achieve the problem. So, in policy too, we look at those things. How do we choose? How do we focus? So, policy formulation must focus on the goal, right? On the specific objectives, and also those must translate into your vision and your mission. This is what it is all about in policy. And as I said earlier, the rational choice is it's about the cost and benefits. The measure the cost and benefits. What gives you best, what does it give you? And which are the tools, which are the deal 
uh, two. Now, the best method to be known that you proceed to do your implementation of the policy. And here, you can see that the uh, best outcomes must also be must commensurate or be commensurate with the cost involved. Number one, and also number two, the best uh, alternatives must be effective. Right? So your policy must be effective. The effectiveness of your policy will be measured by how it meets the needs of the people at the end. So the effectiveness of policy is part of the evaluation where you are doing your policy analysis as an end here, right? From formulation, processes, implementation, then as a final end, when you are looking at your outcome, that's where you can do your policy analysis again as an evaluation. Here, you are trying to measure one, the effectiveness of that particular policy, and also the level of efficiency. Efficiency would be in terms of the delivery of brand activities. Were you able to uh, uh, implement those activities at the right time, as required, and also follow the required standards? And also, were you able to look at the, what you call the opportunity costs? What is an opportunity cost? Right? An opportunity cost in a layman's uh, definition is a situation where you invest in what you want to do, right? In your policy, whatever it is, and you don't get the results as you desire. That was an opportunity cost. Something has happened to you at an opportunity that has cost you. Right? So an opportunity cost is where you don't get what you intended to achieve, but you meet with your, your facing cost. Right? That's the cost, the waste, and you don't get what you need to do. And also, this takes us to look at the issues of the throughput uh, again. Between the cost and throughput. Between the cost and throughput, and something like that, these can be looked at uh, side by side. Let me look back at the, 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 the rational choice theory is about assumptions and we find that even if it is assumptions, let's look at the society for example. Who comes up with assumptions? I said the policy can be initiated through public consent, right? The public is concerned about an issue. And what is that issue addressed by government? Who starts what? How do you do it? This is in the group just to say this is wrong, this is wrong, what happens? In every instance, there will always be somebody. Right? There will always be somebody in society who will start something. Right? There will be somebody who will start an issue. And that individual can bring support around himself to achieve the goal. A very simple example, Timur Zabutambo was starting something as an individual. May have been influenced by the environment, right? But even when the environment is very bad, there was somebody who can come out, right? To try and initiate uh, action. Now, when that action has been accepted, it becomes what you call a social action. Social action means an action which involves more than one individual. So a social action is an action undertaken by more than one individual. So any disillusionment by an individual can actually lead to a social action. Depending on how that individual manages that particular situation. Is that individual ready to mobilize people behind that particular individual to support? In case of Muzabu, for example. Yes. Okay. Is nobody available to support you in your action in case of going very low? Yes. What is the difference? If this was a policy issue. What would be the difference? You have not to develop the policy on the uh, public advocacy for change, right? As in your goal, public advocacy for 
And uh, so here, the social action is uh, associated with choices that become more public, right? The choices that look for more public and bigger or larger outcomes. That's what social action is. Social action looks for something that's bigger and chooses something which is good as what we call the public good. So it's something that uh, is big and it brings about the, uh, what we call the public good. Let's try to stop somewhere here. Right. So we shall look at when we we'll meet again. Tomorrow? Tomorrow morning?